Previously on the Damage Guild Podcast. Prepare yourself for the truly fearsome beasts that lie in wait. A trapdoor falls out. Some gigantic snake monster. What? what? Oh, I want a sample of that. You notice a small humanoid picking the pocket of someone else nearby. I would like to cast message. Hey, uh, you're being pickpocketed. Look around. Hey, you thief. Releases his hand and starts running and darting through the crowd. We gotta get after that guy. He could have easily slipped into one of the crowds. Let's go into the curiosity shop. We're looking for boxes. We are box collectors. She pulls out a box that does indeed resemble the one that you are looking for. You are concluding your transaction and you hear loud screams rising from the central tent. You lift up the flap and see a white dragon. What? On <laughs> Holy crap! <gasps> It is perhaps a bit smaller than some of the legends, but it's still an impressive 15 feet tall or so, and you can see it's breathing ice, and this whole tent is just freezing cold as it roars and throws its breath weapon all around the area. Wow. Oh my goodness. The guard at the front says, hey, you're not allowed in here. Get back outside. He tries pushing you up. Oh, we thought something was going wrong. Sorry. Yeah, we thought people were dying and stuff. Thought people needed help. Can't you see we have weapons? We're adventurers. Give us a break. Oh, yeah, we're part of the Sapphire Saber, and we, we... Yeah, we show them our badges. Show our badges. You already know that the Sapphire Saber is not recognized in this country? Yeah, but we're still adventurers. We can still help. Yeah, we still flash our badges. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know who we are. Out here. You're not supposed to be inside. And he looks kind of nervous <laughs> seeing the flap open and you standing there. He keeps glancing back towards the stage. All right. He can make a shove check to try and move me out of the way because I'm standing in the flap just staring at this dragon. <laughs> okay. But he's not, he's not like, freaking out. There's nothing wrong. He looks nervous at the moment, but you're not sure if it's because you're coming in or because of the dragon. He's probably just worried he's going to lose his job. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I rolled a natural one on my shove check. <laughs> uh, my Ooh. acrobatics check to resist is a 21. <laughs> so he is pushing just standing in vain. There. Trying to get you out of the way. <laughs> no, really, this dragon does not like people standing in the light like this. Please back out, out, oh, out, out, out. Okay, I'll close <laughs> the flat behind me. <laughs> I was saying we should initiate a challenge. Like, we should just stand in the doorway. That's what I'm doing. Like, look, like, <laughs> it's like the dragon's like one of those animals that you don't make eye contact with, but we, like, make very, like, intentional eye contact. Oh, wow, uh, that, sounds, that sounds foolish, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very unwise. Yeah. All right, so you pick, you pick Tokus up because that's what he's doing. Okay. <laughs> like, let, let's, let's go. Let's go. All right, we leave. Yeah, we walk out. Okay, thank goodness nobody's getting turned into popsicles in there. It looks like the show that they're putting on right now, Beyond the Dragon itself, is a group who's engaging it in possibly mock battle. You're not sure if they're actually fighting or not. Almost like they're goading the dragon into doing more. Oh, wow. It doesn't look particularly hmm. safe. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> super dumb. I mean, it sounds awesome <laughs> yeah. to watch, but I'm sorry for those guys because they're going to Yeah, get... maybe this is that new part of the carnival that we heard in the advertisements. <laughs> yeah. Probably. And it's maybe not tested yet. They've upped their game from last year, clearly. Seeing that nothing is immediately wrong, you head back out? Yep. We head back to the amulet and staff. Slowly walk away like everything's okay. But if something does happen, we'll turn around and save everybody. But let's let's leave. <laughs> We'll swing by the Cranky Kenku on the way back to get another chicken stick. (laughs) We could say hi to our friends. Yeah. Hey, guys. And I could slip some of the fairy dust in their drink to see what symptoms occur. (laughs) Perfect. All right. Let's keep going. (laughs) I could do that. That's messed up. I don't know what it does, so. You Mm. arrive back at the amulet and staff, and you find Sir Draknar is still there. It looks like he's just closing up shop, though. It's getting pretty late. Well, Sir Draknar, and I take the little box in my hand, and I slam it down on the counter. I say, I believe you were looking for this. (laughs) He's like, you broke it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I trust you didn't do anything too untoward to obtain this. I'm not going to be seeing guards coming in here about this, am I? We did nothing illegal, nothing... No, we even have the receipt right here. Yes, you owe us 25 gold pieces. (laughs) (laughs) You actually bought it after these... 
<sighs> yeah, so our <laughs> options were to either do something untoward and illegal and steal it, or just buy it back. Right. Well, that's very well. I'm sure Lady Resuvius will pay you great reward for everything that you've done. I swipe it back and I say, I'm sure you will pay us the 25 <laughs> gold that we paid to get this back non-illegally, which is also called legally sometimes. <laughs> we do have the receipt though, right? We did, come on, we did get a receipt. We definitely have okay, the receipt. so we show them the receipt and say, we did pay the money. <laughs> come on, man. It was actually 25 gold. What would you rather have, us return without your item, or you gain a bad reputation with Lady Restuvius and lose her future business? Uh. I think we have a clear outcome here. That's true. We could just bring this box directly back to Lady Restuvius ourselves. We could tell her that when we arrived, the item was not ready as promised. We say all this out loud within <laughs> earshot. <laughs> don't get me wrong, Sir Drachnar. You're a cool guy, but come on. Let's be reasonable here. You're a cool guy, but don't be a foofle nugget, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. How, how does this sound? I can give you 15 gold and some discounts on some of these items over here. How about 15 gold and a 10 gold piece discount off of one of your items? <laughs> that sounds reasonable to me. All right. Fine. All right, Tokus, pick something out that costs 10 gold pieces or less. <laughs> no, that costs exactly 10 gold pieces. All right, so let's do some more shopping, just like last episode. <laughs> yeah, right. The shopping spree. So, um, oh, uh, let's light the magic vine candle. Oh, yeah. Magic of fire. And let's only use it for six seconds. You didn't buy that candle. Oh, that's right. You didn't buy it? No! <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. time to fire up the ritual. Yeah. <laughs> Just give us 10 minutes, Sir Drachnar. Yeah, we like to take our time when we shop. We take 10 minutes shopping and casting. We like to take our time when we identify magical items. Yeah. All right, so you like kneel down in the middle of the shop and start chanting and <laughs> drawing runes in the floor. and We take decisions very seriously. <laughs> yeah. We have to commune with our goat gods. Yeah, so Tokus, you look around while Aslo's casting the ritual. So, among the cheaper items, there is a stone bowl that looks like it's just been chiseled out of plain gray stone, and it has scorch marks all on the inside, coated in soot. The shelf has a label on it underneath that says, Bowl of Hidden Fire. Hmm. Take a closer look at it. Well, honestly, I could carve a better stone bowl blindfolded, but I can't carve a bowl that makes hidden fire. Ah, uh, yes, this normally goes for 30 gold, but... I suppose 20 gold for you. Do we look that poor? Like, like in rags? <laughs> no, no, it's because of our 10 gold piece discount. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Simply speak the word and fire ignites within the bowl. But not just any fire. This fire can only be seen and only casts light over a short distance. Perfect for hiding out in the woods, making your camps unseen from the creatures that prowl the night. Hmm. Secret cooking. So, like, if someone was looking at our light from a mile away, they wouldn't be able to see it. Not even a mile. They, it only shines light out to 15 feet. Wow. And then it's like a self-contained thing, and so it just looks like pitch blackness through it. Almost like the car in the James Bond movie that has mirrors and cameras on both sides of it. That makes it look, <laughs> it's like a cloaking device that makes it look invisible. So, it's like a fire that's invisible. He says, yes, exactly like the James <laughs> Bond car. The cloaked cooking bowl. It's a fire that is only visible to people within 15 feet. Wow. That is pretty cool. I like that one. We have a lot of situations where we need to make fires, but don't want people to see us. Can I, like, cook other things in it besides food? Could I use it for, like, heating things for my experiments as well, perhaps? It produces heat just like any normal fire. If you do put something on it, smoke might still be seen. Mm. Although the fire that it produces itself makes no smoke. So if you cook over it, you might have smoke from your meal. It's a smokeless, seamless cloaked fire bowl. Kind of, yeah. This guy's a better salesman than that girl, and that like that's like her. Li <laughs> oh, well, he's also a salesman. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's her livelihood. She wasn't all that good. What if I were to use the legendary item known as the sewer stew pot of savory self cooking that cooks food without a fire? <laughs> what if I were to use that in conjunction with this magical item? 
<laughs> Wait, you put the bowl in the stew pot. Exactly, Tokus. That was exactly what I was thinking. Because we do already have that magical item. We have a lot of, like, cooking-related items. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how the two items really interact here. Uh, I see. You're right. You're exactly right. Forget I said it. Said anything. <laughs> Great answer. Wow. <laughs> I forget what the sewer stew pot does, Chaba. It cooks without fire. <laughs> it would be like, if you want to cook a stew or warm up a liquid or something, you could boil it. Mm -hmm. without any fire or other heat. This one will generate light invisibly. Yeah. <laughs> so in other words, we can sit around this one and we have light, but nobody sees our light. Right. Yeah, you have light and heat and no one would see it outside of your circle. This sounds like it's more general purpose. The stew pot sounds more like it's for cooking. Like, I could maybe use this item. Why don't you just have me buy it, guys? I'll just go broke. It's fine. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a cool item. It does. Yeah, it could be useful. That's pretty cool. I agree. I say we get it. Yeah, let's get that one. That's a good one. All right, fair enough. Here you go. So we get the 30 gold piece bowl for only five gold that we give him, and then we give him the... Uh, so it's a barter. It's a trade. We give him the, the gear box. Okay, so we've checked off our first quest objective. Is that right, Draknar? Is that what you're telling me right now? Draknar still has to complete the item for Lady Restuvius, and I say we hire ourselves as free security guards for this shop until the job's done, because we don't want those gallivanters gallivanting up in here again and stealing the thing all over again. And then gallivanting away. Yeah. Yeah. So, Draknar, congratulations. You've just hired yourself three free security cards. We'll watch your store 24 hours a day until the job's done. Yep. And we would like free access to the kitchen. You can thank us later. We're available for 10 gold a day. <laughs> for free. <laughs> thank you very much. For 10 free gold a day. Just 10 <laughs> of them. Wait, so we're paying him 10 gold? To... <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> well, as I said, the rest of it was nearly complete, so this shouldn't take me long to finish it off. I'll have it ready in the morning. All right, sounds good. We'll be here. We'll stay the night. Yep, sleep over. I don't have any extra rooms, I'm afraid. That's okay. We're used to sleeping on the ground. We'll sleep on your floor here. Yep. <laughs> this will be perfectly suitable. And don't worry, if anything's missing from the store, you'll know who took it, so we won't take anything. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> All right, Aslo. You heard the man? <laughs> he didn't say anything. It's one of you two making it. <laughs> he might as well have been, though. Shut He's up. of one mind with us on this. <laughs> Sorry, too late, guys. I feel like you just like making me do it. Yeah, whoever said it has to roll. All right. Eleven. Twelve. All right, that's decent. How did I roll better than you? Because I don't have any pluses. And you rolled higher than me on the d20. <laughs> <laughs> you rolled a higher number, that's how. <laughs> this is how we pressure him into it. Please, please, can we sleep over, please? please? Pretty, 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 please. Well, I appreciate all that you have done for me. I'm afraid I can't just let you sleep on my floor. Okay, well, then we will be in the alley behind the window to your workshop. Yep, we'll be right here. Watching. <laughs> and waiting for your <laughs> opening bell to ring. We'll see you in the morning. Very well. Good night, sweet Sir Draknar. Actually, we're going to tuck him in. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll tuck you in while you work. And we'll get the warm milk ready, the yeah. cookie. Yep. We'll read you a story. Yep. It's going to be fun. <laughs> We've prepared a really nice bedtime story for you. Take us to your bed chambers. We think you're going to like it. <laughs> it's the cult and the king. <laughs> please, please lead the way. <laughs> That's the title of the, the children's book, The Cult and the King. That's all we it's all we talk about, apparently. If it's not cults, we're talking about the king. Once upon a time. I have many things still left to do tonight. I haven't no, even eaten my dinner yet. The track now just it's time for bed. You need your sleep. We'll help you. You need your sleepy buys, remember but little track now? We'll get the dustpan out. We'll sweep the shop for you. I am closing up shop. Nope. No, nope. I must ask that you step outside. <laughs> okay, like I said, we'll be in the alley behind the window to your workshop. Yep. <laughs> you can keep us out, but you can't keep us off of the outside. And then in the morning, like, we're standing outside the doors if it's, like, an early release of something. Or we have a tent and we're, like, right outside the door. <laughs> yeah, could you point approximately to where your, lo your workshop is located in the building? <laughs> yeah, we like to watch. I'll be working upstairs. Great. There's not really anywhere else in this building. Yeah, perfect. Where's the ladder? I've got my grappling hook. It's fine. <laughs> we'll be, just, like, sleep on the we'll roof. be on the roof directly above you. Good night, Sir Jack. Now we'll see you in the morning. I will sleep dangling <laughs> upside down from a rope outside your window. So if you need me, you just open that bad boy up. 
and I'll be there. <laughs> and slap me in the face and wake me up. No ninjas are getting into your house tonight, Sir Jack and I. Yeah, I'm pretty helpful when it comes to workshops, so if you need, an- need another pair of hands. It's true. I assure you I can take care of everything else on my own. <laughs> oh, you mean like the last time when they stole all of your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, good good call, Sir Jack and I. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. See you in the morning. We keep watch over his house. We definitely do. Yeah. We're not coming off strong or creepy at all. <laughs> no, not in the least. Take us to your bedchamber so that we may read you a bedtime story and give you cookies and warm milk. <laughs> uh, what time of day is it, by the way? It's late evening. All right. We should probably go sleep outside of his house. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. Shaba, do you want to set up a tent in an alley? Yeah, let's get that grappling hook going. We can use our new bowl, too. Ah. Yeah, he'll not, he won't know we're on the roof. Yeah, that's perfect. Before we leave, I, I make the rounds of just the shop, and I lock all of his windows. And then I turn the sign that says open and closed, I turn it to close and lock his door as we go out. Yeah, but you unlock one of the windows that leads to the workshop, so that we can help <laughs> so we can spy So on we can get in, yeah. You set up camp in an alley. Night falls. It is just getting colder and colder. Winter is coming. <laughs> it is. We turn on the bowl for warmth. You hear people still coming back from the carnival and such, excited voices over the next couple of hours, but eventually it dies down, and you spend the night there. Nothing particularly noticeable happens. You wake up covered in dew. Uh, Nature's shower. (laughs) A dew bath, I used to call it. (laughs) <laughs> Does this dew freeze over? Is it more like a frost? Oh, it's even better when that happens. No, it's not actually winter yet. It's still early mid-autumn. Hmm. It's nothing like a, a wake up from a frosty dew bath. <laughs> Gets you up and at <laughs> Oh yeah, what what does our year system look like in this world? Is it like named after the gods or something? Like our months? Kavoktember. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kavoktoberfest, bro! <laughs> Embustember. <laughs> I think the different months would be named after different noble houses. The kings. Yeah. Okay, that makes so sense. So from the old empire. Mm-hmm. Mm. So instead of September, it's silver stock ember. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So I get out my grappling hook and start swinging it. <laughs> no, we go around to the front door and start knocking without stopping until he opens the door. Are you knocking before his store actually opens, though? Yep. Yeah. Let's make it look like we set up camp, like, right on his porch. You see a shutter open, and he looks outside. Sup? I've been working on it. Just give me another half hour or so, okay? Hey, are you safe? Is everything fine? Have you been burgled? Everything's fine. Yeah, how'd you sleep? How's the bedtime story? Did you like it? He closes the shutter. (laughs) (laughs) He closes the cat. Oh, man. Well, that conversation went well. (laughs) Yeah, like most of our conversations. What should we do for the next half hour, guys? Let's do a four-way thumb war. Okay. Where, like, you know, you cross your arms, and then you do the thumb war with the two people next to you, and then we stand in the circle and do that. Except Stripey doesn't have thumbs. Uh, We'll we'll do paw war with Stripey. Yeah, paw war. (laughs) Yeah. Where you just slap each other's paws a bunch. Yeah, you could play the one game where you do this. One, two, three, four. I declare thumb war. <laughs> Ready to go. All right. Well, I don't even remember what that name's that game's called. Where you do like I think Shaba just automatically wins every time because <laughs> his thumb just covers our entire hand. No, but that's the thing. When I play thumb war with you guys, I go super easy on you because you have such short thumbs. Actually, mechanically speaking, I don't think we can play thumb war. We need to go back and epi- like edit that one episode where we had that thumb war tournament because like it'd be it'd be like hand versus finger. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's why it's a joke. That's what makes it funny. Oh. <laughs> or like we have you drink a potion that like gives you small hands or grows my hands. Yeah, you just have to, you, you you modify that giant potion, that giant growth potion to only work on your hands. <laughs> or just like make like a, to- a tonic version or like a lotion version of it. Yeah, and you just grow my hands. So you just have Hulk hands and regular sized tokens. <laughs> like, yeah, I like that invention. I'm ready to play. That stuff would sell like hotcakes. Giant hand lotion? Yeah, giant growth hand lotion. Yeah. It's perfect. I don't know who would buy that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we wait around for him to finish up. Eventually, he opens the door. Come on inside. We do. He's completely given up on his whole boisterous shopkeeper front for you guys. He's just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> good man, good man. Oh, man. It doesn't take long for new acquaintances to become true friends, does it? <laughs> 
<laughs> we just keep adding to the League of Evil. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So he leads you inside and brings out this box that's roughly nine inch cube and it's got a big number dial padlock on the front of it. And he says, This is for the lady Restuvius. It is not to be opened by anyone except for her. She told us that. I'm just making sure. Will she know the code when we bring it back to her? Togus immediately starts trying to solve it. <laughs> yes, she actually gave me the code to put on the box. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Drac. I ask that you handle it carefully. Do not subject it to too much shaking or hard motion. Ooh. It is rather delicate in some ways. I packed it as well as I could, but be careful. How would it do strapped to a saddlebag while galloping down the road on a horse? <laughs> How would, how would that suit it? Because that's, that's our intended mode of transportation home. Saddlebags might not be the best way. Perhaps if you had it in your backpack and could absorb some of the shock from the horse riding. Eh, all right, we'll see what we can do. Now we need to find another magical item. The magic, it's like a, ba- a bag of suspension. A spring of shock absorbency. These microphone holders are magic? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the magic of modern technology. <laughs> Except for Sean's. <laughs> oh, mine has one of those. I have the same mic stand as you, Jay. It's got like the little... Uh, the, I, would, yeah, I wouldn't go that far. I'd say you used to have the same mic stand as me. <laughs> Your current mic stand is a shell of its former self. <laughs> it is. It is a, yeah, I probably, uh, I probably had this like since I was early streaming. I don't think I've bought another... No, you have not. We've this. noticed. We've noticed yeah. that you have not. So this, this rig, this setup's like five years old? Yeah. Oh, just that just that Makes old, sense. huh? Makes yeah. sense. Wow. Five years young. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the question. Where is our next quest objective? Well, the one that you were assigned brings you to a different location. Arliel in Lessonrel, was that the second one? Yes, I believe it was. Those names both provided by Uber Roots, uh, KD on Twitter, the hashtag the only KD on Twitter. Thanks again. Hey, Uber Roots. So yeah, there's Miss Arliel in Lessonrel is the second item, but there is also your possible stop over at the Dwarven Ruins. Yeah, which we really, really wanted. I've wanted to do that encounter ever since we found out about it. And by we, I mean Aslo. <laughs> yeah, ever since you found out about it, which is like before you even found out about it. We should totally do that. Is it on the way? Like, are the other objectives like past the ruins or is the ruins like off to the side? It's kind of off to the side. You're talking about the secret hidden city? The lost city? The lost city of Ildrazar. Ildrazar is probably about two days south-southwest. It's sort of along the way, but if you head west from there, you will hit Lesson Rel after another few days. That settles it then. So we're going to go like this, and then we'll hit Lesson Rel, I think. That's, that's what I think we should do. What do you guys think? Yeah. Where is the other one? The third location? Istoranda. Easteranda is farther west in the adjacent country. Ah, uh, in Aranth. Okay. So, yeah, basically, it's kind of on the way-ish. It looks like if we're going to go, now is the time to do it. So let's actually roleplay this, because we're playing a roleplaying game. That would make sense. Mm. Shaba, myself, and especially Stripey, don't want to go as much as you want to go, Aslo. We're, we're going to take a detour from the main quest? Is that what you're explaining to us? <sighs> Guys, I think it would be best if we make a quick stop. There's a little town I know nearby here called Ildrazer. Uh, it's very quaint. It's a little seaside town. Okay, it's not seaside at all, but why don't we just make a quick stop? It shouldn't take more than like 30 minutes, and we'll be on our way. This is the lost city that you talked about, right? The lost city from your map. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Uh, yeah, why would we not go there, Tokus? Why would we ever not do that? We can add Finder of Lost Cities onto our resume after we do this. You realize that, right? That's That's true. Very true. Uh, Shaba, why are you making it seem like I'm the only one that doesn't want to go? Okay, well, Stripey... I mean, do you know Stripey? Yes, unfortunately. So if if he could talk right now, he would say, <laughs> he would say, you know, what are you guys doing? This is dumb. Let's go eat something. <laughs> well, why don't you just talk to him about it, Shaba? You guys are tight like that. Well, we we always go where we want, regardless of where Stripey wants to go, right? So why should this be any different? Well, he probably really resents us at this point. Ah, uh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> He's hated us all along. 
<laughs> didn't he want to, like, really long time ago, Shaba, didn't, like, when you guys first, like, were able to communicate each other, like, didn't he want to go to that Badger theme park or something? He's been bugging me about that for months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Badger World, I think. Something yeah. like that. So there's a lot of places that he wants to go, but we always have other business to attend to. So mm-hmm. let's just continue to do yeah. our thing. Yeah, it's like, it's like that thing you always promise your kids, like, yeah, we'll go to Disney World. We'll go to someday. Badger World at some point. We'll go to Badger World at some yeah. point. You know, <laughs> when you're older. And then, like, then they're, like, 18 and you never went. <laughs> and they don't care anymore. <laughs> and, yeah. Exactly. And then they resent you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true or anything. you become estranged. And... Yeah, that happened to one of my friends. It, well, that's exactly what happened with your relationship with Stripey, isn't it? Yeah. That's why he, he doesn't like you. Once he grows up, we'll eventually become estranged. <laughs> because of his bitter resentment. High aspirations. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get those years back, Shaba. <laughs> You're right. Point is... We all are in the same boat here. We all want to go to Wheeldrazer. Yeah. Even though Stripey doesn't. All I have to do, really, is tell him there's food there, and he'll be like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> okay, cool. I mean, I've always wanted to study a dwarvish ruin. Who hasn't, right? Now's your chance. I'm in. Let's go. Let's Ildraz it up. And your plan on buying horses? I assume you spent so much money you don't have enough to... Yeah, we can't afford yeah, horses. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> We're just, <laughs> just going to walk. <laughs> I do think we should buy mounts first because that'll cut down our travel time to Ildrazer. We'll tie them up to a tree or like a broken fountain or something. And then when we go to the next place, we'll have a shorter travel time there. And then especially on the last one, it's like a long way to the other place. You know, we can cut our price of mounts in half by only buying two and hitching them up to a wagon. We'll just do the two horses pulling a, uh, a a cart or a wagon or something. There are roads going through the mountains, but there probably aren't any maintained roads going to the ruined city. Oh, yeah. And wagons really can't leave the roads. About that. So let's not do that. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and Stripey can only ride a pony. He can't ride a full-size horse, so we're going to have to account <laughs> for that. I think we can save in other ways, though. Um, like buying crappy horses? Discount <laughs> horses, Shaba. Discount horses. Um, okay. to, uh, Tokus and I can get a Mastiff <laughs> or a Pony. Um, you can get like a, a draft horse, perhaps? You can get a trained Mastiff that will actually let you ride it? Yeah, dude, according to the book. Wow. Yeah, wasn't there... There was like a comedian... It might have been Jerry Seinfeld that was like, this horse's name is Glue Stick. <laughs> <laughs> Glue stick. Because he's, he's so old and sway back that they're about to send him to the glue factory. <laughs> it's his last hurrah. His last ride. <laughs> uh, you know, they only, used the ho- they only used to use the host for that. Like, the rest of the horse gets used for other things, right. does it not? Pepperoni. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hair. They use the hair. Yeah, yeah, pepperoni, like you said. Okay. <laughs> you know, all the horse lovers that listen to our show are going to be appalled. I'm all just I know, stop I know Courtney like really loves horses. She, yeah, she's never. Like, gonna... They made it all the way to this episode. Now, Courtney, like, I'm going to get a call from Courtney. Like, I don't listen to your yeah, show anymore. Geez, I just stopped listening after you made that comment about horses. <laughs> uh, we could also put you on a camel, Shaba. Oh, that's exotic. I like it. <laughs> Are there any mechanical vehicles? Do you mean cars? Like a steam engine? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure the answer is no. There are no self-powered vehicles. There are airships. Airships existed at some point. They have not been known of in these lands since Empire fell. Yeah, well, I'm holding out for us to get that mount. Yeah, we'll just wait around until an airship flies by and hail a ride as if it were a taxi cab. <laughs> it crash lands and, like, the crew has all been killed. We solve the mystery. <laughs> yeah, and then we get better. the we get the airship keys from the captain right. as payment for solving the mystery. Even better. We'll wait around until an airship crash lands right in front of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> bound to happen at some point. <laughs> I think I did say that there were rumors of airships being seen in the south. Yeah. <laughs> Crash landing. What about that flying specter horse thing? That would be a cool mount. That would be oh, awesome. Yeah. Let's buy one of those. Except it's evil. Well, Dark Tokus doesn't care about that. I could maybe command said horse, mm-hmm. and then I become like slowly more and more evil and like influenced by the horse's aura. Yep, you become the, the king of the Nazgul. 
Yeah. Uh, so what I'm are we looking? Like the Nicholas Cage of what? What are we looking at for <laughs> Ghost Rider? <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Ghost... <laughs> Could you finish that thought? <laughs> I become like the the evil Nicholas Cage writer of Dark Unicorns. What? Because <laughs> he was Ghost Rider, the movie. That really bad oh, oh, I thought they were gonna. Ever. It was because they were gonna cast Nicholas Cage in Lord of the Rings as Aragorn before the, <laughs> which would have been a huge mistake and ruined yeah. the entire franchise. I did. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I thought that was your the reference you were making. No, no, I wish that was my... You know what, can we cut that out and make it that that was my reference? <laughs> can I just borrow your reference? Alright, I'll do that. This Cage wasn't going to be in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, he was. They were gonna. They wanted a rumor that Peter was, Jackson yeah. wanted to cast him before he cast the original guy, who then got traded out for. Was this before or after Nicolas Cage like started ruining his acting career? Uh, was there ever a time when he hadn't <laughs> right. his acting career? <laughs> At least he's consistent. Uh, yeah. Vigo Mortensen, yeah. So the guy before Vigo Mortensen, before that guy, mm-hmm. they wanted. I don't know that he actually auditioned for it or anything, but they wanted to cast him. Man, in the role. If they had, I would have stopped watching that movie before I started watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have just not gone to see it. All right. Well, listen. I don't know about you guys, but I'm buying a mastiff. Okay, you buy mounts if you want. I'm going to be riding a dog. How much is a draft horse? Uh, draft horse is fifty gold. It's fifty gold pieces. Well, they also have riding horses, right? Yeah, riding horse is seventy five, and they go faster. They go sixty feet. I want a draft horse. I could afford a mule, or I could buy something. I think Tokus would need something bigger than a dog, so probably pony or mule or donkey or something. Yeah, yeah. Pony is only five more gold than a mastiff. I don't have enough money for these. Things. I I could get a pony actually, but it would tap me out. Weren't you going to divvy up your party funds? We were. But Aslo's been holding out for some strange reason. It's not like him at all. Yeah, weird. So what happened to the party funds, Aslo? Have you been keeping track? Oh, you know, uh, where did those go? <laughs> uh, no, I have, no, they're right here. Let's do that first. But just so you know, a donkey or a mule is only 8 gold, and its speed is also 40 feet. Like a lot of these other ones, which is weird <laughs> now that I think of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Wait, man. mules are the same speed? Yeah. I just realized that. It's only 8 gold pieces? We could get a bunch of donkeys and mules. I don't think they make as good mounts as horses, though. They don't. They do not. They're just not as cooperative. They're like for for packing yeah. uh, provisions on. If you need to mm-hmm. haul extra yeah. gear for a long trip, they're not really good for riding. Uh, that's true. Okay, so what's our uh, what is what are our percentages again here? Well, uh, forty, thirty, thirty, right? Uh, you get fifty, and yeah, no, no, you're you're right. Forty, thirty, thirty. No, you're right. I, I get fifty. <laughs> you guys get twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. All because of a joke that Sean made in the first episode. <laughs> We're still yeah. dealing with this nonsense. <laughs> Wait, the split. <laughs> the split. Yeah, I think it really adds because, like, it adds to the fact that, it like, adds to the time not... that we spend doing math instead of playing Dungeons and Dragons okay, on the show. Up. Hold up, Jay. <laughs> Maybe this is accentuated for you because you're the editor. I think it adds because from a story perspective, we all despise Aslo just a little bit. (laughs) Because he's not just our superior, but he gets more money than us Uh, because of his finder's fee. So it it like plays into his character that like that's why there's some animosity brewing underneath because money problems. You also always have the option of reworking that contract in character since you've changed the rest of it. We've, I have tried many times. I've tried to amend it many times, and uh, Aslo always goes back and fixes it. So Aslo is not very good at math. Definitely not Brian. Aslo, can we just rework the contract? It's, this, is, this has been bothering us for almost 70 episodes. Yeah, you know what? This is getting ridiculous. Can we just can we talk about this? Let's just make it really simple. A hundred, zero, zero. Perfect. <laughs> Good idea. Oh, wow. That's really clean. Okay. So we're just splitting in thirds now? Yeah. 33.33 repeating. That's easier. Let's rework the contract. And then you give me back the special purse you've been using to keep track of Stripey and I's debts to each other. And you say, you keep track of this. Yeah. <laughs> you keep track of your own debts to each other. <laughs> each of us gets six platinum pieces. Whoa. How did we have all that? Chubb, I need your John Hancock on this. Okay, all right, I sign it without looking at what it says. <laughs> yeah, I do the same. <laughs> Tokus just wrote himself at 110% of profit, <laughs> and we get zero. So, like, we have to pay 10% every time we gain money. We each also get 40 gold pieces. Nice. 97 silver pieces. Ah. And 23 copper pieces. I really want a llama. Can, can we just <laughs> can I just have a llama? can just buy a camel and reskin it as a llama. <laughs> 
<laughs> literally just skin it and put a <laughs> llama skin on it. I really think Tokus would like to ride a llama. Is there a llama farm nearby? <laughs> <laughs> I think a llama would be an apt mount for Tokus. Yeah, can I have a llama, please? You might be able to find one. This is the mountains. Mm. They kind of live in the mountains. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to hold out, guys. I'll just buy a cart, and I'll just have somebody pull me. <laughs> uh, okay, like a little travail, a little sled. That might be a better purchase for one of us to buy something to be pulled instead of a mount. Yeah, well, the only th- reason why we wouldn't do that is because Thane said that some of the mountain roads are pretty treacherous, and they, we have, we're going to have to go off-road. Well, I'm holding out for a llama, so can I ride on somebody's... Why don't I just buy a horse and the two of you sit in our shoulder pads that you made <laughs> took us? Oh, yeah. Did we actually finish those? <laughs> it was like balancing on like a cliff road, like sideways as the horse <laughs> leans over. <laughs> You've had plenty of time. So I, we finally do prototypes for that. If you're all riding on one horse, I don't know if it can handle that. <laughs> it just squats. Like the, all the legs go out like this. <laughs> I will definitely be buying a Mastiff for sure. I'm going to get a draft horse. I'm just trying to pick a color. There's a lot of horse colors. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to name your horse, or are you just going to leave it with of the name? Of the... Are you kidding me? I'm going to name my horse. <laughs> How would I not name my horse? My horse's name is Taily. Taily? <laughs> Stripey and Taily? Yeah, because he has a tail, and it's long and beautiful. I'm seeing a trend with your animal name. Why? Java. It's a completely unique and new name that nobody would ever have expected. <laughs> okay, uh-huh. So you renamed the horse, because it already had a name before you bought it. Yeah, I'm going to get a Palomino <laughs> draft horse named Taily. I'm going to make it a female. All right. You know what? I don't want to be left behind. I'm going to get a mule <laughs> that I don't plan to name. And with the plan of trading it out anytime I find a llama farm, I'll be like, hey, I'll trade you this mule for a llama. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll throw in some chickens, like bartering. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, sure. We make this trade all the time. People yeah. come through here <laughs> offering look, look, mules. There's our mule pen over there. This is all the mules people have traded us for llamas. Is a llama going to be more cost like a caramel? <laughs> what are llamas even used for? Uh, their wool. Just wool. People knit sweaters out of their wool. Yeah, but I'll train it. And for spitting on people. It'll take some time. <laughs> well, that's why I want it, Shava. Yeah, exactly. You can train <laughs> it to have a spit attack. We've become really close, and I'll name that one, and he will be Larry. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> He'll be my Larry. I don't know about llama mounts, or mule mounts for that matter. Well, maybe I don't ride it. Maybe it just carries my really heavy gear. There you go. I think donkeys do work as mounts, though, right? Gotcha. Okay, so I get a donkey. There has to be some reason why mules are typically pack animals and donkeys are mounts. Yeah. Because mules are inbred. They're horse and donkey mix that are, like, messed up in the head, like they're not right. And so they they have, like, very weird personalities and they don't make trustworthy, calm mounts. Huh. So mm. people just use them as pack animals. Well, there we go. Just not a good breed for it, huh? Yeah. All right, so donkey, please. Okay. And his name will be Kong. <laughs> <laughs> please, no. <laughs> Kong the donkey. This is my donkey, Kong. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. I'm only going to have him as long as until I get a llama. So your donkey, when you get it, is named Petunia. You can name it whatever you want if you decide to change it. I will take Petunia if I get a cool mount later. I will ride on a petunia. What's my horse's original name? You said the horse was a Palomino. Yeah, a, f- a Palomino, uh, a filly. A Pino Palomino. A Pino Paladino. They're like golden colored, like almost almost a champagne colored with like whitish light hair. Butterscotch. Butterscotch. All right, Butterscotch. Welcome to the AAA team. Your name is now Taily. <laughs> All right, what's my Mastiff's name? Mr. Masterson? They're like... Giant dogs, tan fur, and black spots. Well, now, is it a bull mastiff or an English mastiff? Ooh, good question. Yeah, that's an important distinction. No idea. I mean, it just needs, like, a really generic dog name. I was going to say, like, Christopher. Christopher. My friend Kevin, who has two English mastiffs, uh, has their names are Zoe and George. Oh, I like George. Yeah. Boy George. George. George of the Jungle. That is a very English name, isn't it? George. Come here, George. George. Oh, he likes it. Haslo, he likes the name. See, he's like <laughs> slobbering all over, all over Tokus. Like, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Wow, we have so many pets. Stripey's going to be so jealous. Yeah. He's not going to get any attention anymore. Not that he ever did. 
<laughs> I can cute. just imagine Stripey like perched on the head of the horse that you're getting shot by, and he's just like this. <laughs> just like riding yeah. on the top of his head. Uh, definitely. Because like, I bet badgers are kind of like a lot of pets that like to stick their head out of the car. Like he's like got his tongue out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Say this is a young dog that hasn't yet learned its name, so you can name it whatever you want. Uh, I was thinking Ralph. Hmm. Personally. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, we become new best friends. Toka starts drafting up plans to build his own mechanical mount. Perfect. All you have to do is build that parrot, but build it, like, three times bigger and then make it, like, a mech. Like, uh, an exosuit where you climb inside of it. <laughs> it's like a parrot, except it's got, like, tank treads. <laughs> just a rolling parrot? It's like a parrot tank. Yeah, it's just rolling. <laughs> sure you can figure something out as a gnome. <laughs> What's nice is it does not require food, which would make sense. It's a robot. <laughs> if you want to spend your time, your downtime, working on designs and prototyping for that, then maybe at some point when you're back in town, you can put in some money and build your own. Yeah. For now, you can ride on Taily with me and Stripey. I just, like, hold on to the tail? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you can come in the saddle. You're riding your own donkey, right? Oh, I did purchase a donkey for oh, now yeah. that yep. thing lovingly <laughs> named for me. What is it? No, it's not Kong. It's Petunia. He changed the name. It's Petunia. Yeah. All right, Petunia, for now. <laughs> All right, let's go. There's one more thing I want to do. <laughs> Come on. I just, just decided. I buy a vial of holy water, and now we leave. All right, come on, Priscilla. You mean Petunia? Petunia. Oh, yeah, Petunia. <laughs> <laughs> You've already forgotten my name? It looks back at me with, like, indignant eyes. It just stops in its tracks and refuses to move. Stupid donkey. That will never get anywhere. <laughs> like, only moves if I call it Petunia. All right, Petunia. Let's go. Uh, Feed it some fairy dust and see if it grows wings or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I, I mix I mix a little bit of the fairy dust into its feed and see if it, like, <laughs> changes. Perfect. All right, let's go. Seriously, let's go. It devours the food voraciously. Cool. All right, we'll see what happens. It was only an eight gold investment, so... Might as well try it. We make our way toward Ildrazer. Four nerds, one tabletop. The Damage Guild Podcast. Well, howdy, cowpokes. It's me, Rusty Scumboot. And I'm here to tell you about some things that are sure to make your life a better place. For instance, did you know that the Damage Guild is now on the Insta? I don't know what that is, but it must be pretty good, I guess. Go to Instagram.com and search Damage Guild, and you can see a few things that are sure to knock your socks off, I'll tell you what. Now you might be asking yourself, what in tarnation is this crazy hillbilly talking about? Well, I don't rightly know. They just put the words in front of me and I say them. Then they pay me the big bucks and I take both of them bucks and I mosey on back home. Sometimes when I wake up and step outside for breath of that fresh prairie breeze, I can't help but marvel at how good them birds is at tweeting. You want to be a good tweeter too? You can come tweet with us at damageguild.tweeter. No, that ain't it. It's tweeter.com slash damageguild. And lastly, before I leave you high and dry as a prairie dog after a flash flood, if you like what old Rusty's putting down and you want to help me pursue my dream of becoming a full-time cow milker, check out patreon.com slash damageguild. You give old Rusty half a chance and pledge at the bronze, iron, or steel level, believe you me, there'll be some shiny new goodies waiting for you each and every month, mark my words. There's already a bevy of kind-hearted folks lending a hand, and old Rusty sure does appreciate them. Well, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Until then, may the shoulder of the Ram Lord guide your lasso and keep you safe from rattlers and cyclones. You are listening to the Damage Guild Podcast. You leave the city, this time heading south. As you're heading out, you can hear people are still abuzz about something that happened at the carnival last night. People are talking about the dragon. Oh, we drop some eaves. Yes, we do. <laughs> we drop them like they're hot. It sounds like this dragon is a new addition to the show. It's the first time that they put it up for display. Ah. Seems like there were a few mishaps during the performance. Oh. 
several of the performers got severely injured dealing with the dragon, and oh. possibly some of the audience members, according to certain rumors. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it's really unclear how far these rumors have traveled and how true or not they might be. Mm. Oh, I see. They're spreading it around. Yeah. 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 Mm. Exaggerations, maybe? Get people to come. Possibly. You're not really sure. See the danger. And it sounds mm. like the carnival's packing up tonight and heading out. Be gone in the morning. Oh. So maybe it's not good rumors then. Where's the next stop? <laughs> Ildrazer? <laughs> no, they're heading off north somewhere. Mm. Well, we tried to help them, but we got kicked out. So it's only so much three adventurers can do, right? That's right. <laughs> There's only so much three adventurers, a badger, a horse, a donkey, and a riding dog can do <laughs> for a circus. I'm worried now that there's this traveling carnival that has a dragon that might eat innocents. Tokus, we have a traveling carnival of our own, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> but, Shaba, at what point do we let them terrorize various small villages with a dragon? When the authorities do nothing about it. <laughs> we can't police every small business that roams around the countryside. What are we, the police? I don't know, it's just not right, Shaba. Well, the animal rights activists will take care of it, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, if the police won't, surely they will. Yeah, surely the dragon rights activists will get in there and make their voices heard. I'm trying to think if there's anybody we know that knows anything about dragons. <sighs> Probably not. I don't know anything about them. I know that they're cool. I know my great-grandpa walked into a cave that there was rumored to be a dragon's lair and never walked out again. No one ever knew if it was actually a dragon in there, if he just fell down a hole or something. <laughs> Grandpa? <laughs> Grandpa, great-grandpa. You head south with your new mounts that will increase your travel speed. Cuts the trip down to roughly a full day. Cool. Still slowed down due to the rough terrain here, though. Okay. It is early evening, and you suddenly become aware of some type of large bird-like creature in a small clearing up ahead. Oh. It's about the size of a large turkey or so. Does it have a lizard tail? It is moving rather oddly for a bird, though. It has an unusually long neck that's kind of turning around in weird ways that birds can't do. You said it's off in a clearing to the side? It's a clearing ahead of you. Guys, we've discovered the first ostrich. It's a mythical creature. Tokus, we found you a suitable mount. <laughs> <laughs> but I just bought Petunia. <laughs> That's okay. She'll make a good lunch. Just let her go. She'll be fine. When I say that name, I, I want to go like old man voice Tokus. Like, <laughs> Petunia. <laughs> old Petunia. Keep up, Petunia. Yeah, come on, Petunia. I make a perception check. To perceive what's going on. Uh, make a nature check, I would say. Ooh. Yeah, I make a do I know what this thing is check. 19. Either way, just rolled a natural one. Gonna re-roll it. I got a 17 on my do I know what this thing is check. A 17, also. After watching it for a good 20 or 30 seconds, you realize that this closely resembles what you heard about the cockatrices that you almost went on a quest uh, yeah. to find their eggs. Uh, see? I thought so. That's why I said lizard tail. Is that quest still open? No. Uh oh Oh, really? As you recall, the last time you visited the Alchemist Guild, they actually mentioned the cockatrice eggs that they had. Oh, the egg. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Shucks, we're too late. Well, then we just leave it alone. But yeah, you recognize it as a cockatrice. It has this kind of lizard-like neck and tail, bat-like wings, and chicken-like talons and beak. Mmm, chicken on a stick. And from what you know, these things can turn creatures to stone and then eat them. Let's go over and have a conversation. Yeah, or let's not interact with it at all. Is it like Medusa, where, like, you have to look at it to turn to stone? I turn to Tokus and I whisper to him, Tokus, make an arcana check to see if you know how it turns people to stone. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> 14. You know that they actually peck things to stone. Ooh, uh -huh. That sounds unpleasant. So if they peck it, it starts to turn to stone, and then if it's small enough, they'll eat it afterwards. Wow. Ooh. It eats stone. That doesn't sound very palatable. Hmm. You know, peck bugs or whatever and then eat them. Ooh. All right. Here's the plan, gang. 
we're going to send Stripey in as a diversion. <laughs> then we'll keep going toward Ildras. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you guys think of then, that plan? Then once it's turned Stripey to stone, we'll flee in haste. <laughs> <laughs> well, this seems like a job for ranged attacks. So let's range or something, Shaba. It kind of seems like a job of, like, going around it. Yeah, it seems like a job of avoiding it entirely. <laughs> Not getting turned into stone, preferably. Yeah, I don't like being turned into stone. I don't know about you, Tokus. <laughs> so you want to ignore it? Pretty much, yeah. I know you like rocks, but I don't think okay. you literally want to be one. <laughs> yeah, if anything, you'll be attracted to me. <laughs> so we sneak around it? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay. All right, Taylor makes a stealth check. Hold up my necklace and unscrew the stone and become enveloped oh. in darkness. Your mounts are now walking in pitch black through the woods on a mountain. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Dude, dogs have dark vision, don't they? That doesn't matter. It's magical <laughs> darkness. Oh, man. How wide of a berth can we give this thing? All right, so our mounts are all panicking because of the d- sudden darkness. Because <laughs> all of us. You totally did that black. without talking to us. It runs us straight into the cockatrice. <laughs> Petunia, wait. Yeah, you can see it. It's about 50 feet ahead of you. You can just make it out in the moonlight. I mean, you could walk around the whole clearing. We'll do that. Yes. Skirt around the whole thing. Okay, and are you going to try using the darkness stone, or do you realize that... Uh, I realize that it won't work, and I put it back. Yeah, we ta- he takes it out and then quickly realizes the foolishness of the idea. Yeah, as all of the horses neigh and whinny and kind of... Give away our position. Buck at this darkness that just appeared in front of him. Have the horses or your other mounts make stealth checks. 11. Uh, I got a 19. I got a 7 and I'm trying to calculate what the dex is for that. Okay, between the horse and the donkey, the cockatrice looks up once you've made it about a quarter of the way around the clearing. It seems like it's noticed the footfalls of hooves on fallen leaves. Uh And it starts moving towards you, squawking in some sort of hideous imitation of a bird. Uh Uh-oh. And let's roll initiative. Ah, cripes. That'll be a five for Aslo. Shaba's on a 19. Tokus is at an eight. Um, Your mounts move at the same time you do. Use your move to control the mount and make it move. Okay. All right. Shaba, your turn. The cockatrice is still about 50 feet away from you because you were taking a long way to skirt around it. Should we just try to outrun it? Yeah. We definitely should. You guys are really scared of this. Have you fought Carcatrice in other campaigns? Um, I may have, but it's not really that. It's that I don't even know if I would voluntarily fight this thing if we were in a campaign that where we were getting XP. I just really don't want anything in our party to turn to stone right now. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm like, huzzah! And I uh, give Taylor my spurs and take off through the woods. Wait, you bought spurs? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I want spurs. Why didn't you tell me you were getting some? They're real cool, right? Yeah, I would have gotten it if you were getting it, Chava. <laughs> Sorry. Dig spurs into a donkey. <laughs> Digging spurs into a dog sounds really inhumane. <laughs> so you spur Taylor on to her fastest speeds and start dashing through the woods. Yes. In one horse open, draft horse. <laughs> well, I guess that would be your action then, to move and dash. Yep. And Stripey is just riding along with you. That's right. Now the cockatrice sees that you dash off, and it starts to flap its wings and run towards the remaining two, and it gathers up enough speed and gains some semblance of flight as it rushes into the woods. Guys, I don't think we can outrun it after all. This thing flies? I don't know. If it flies, it'll probably have a hard time flying through the trees. It twists and turns and weaves through the trees as much as it can, but it seems to be slowed by them. But it makes it far enough and lands with its talons on top of Petunia. Not Petunia! (laughs) No, not Petunia! So it just lands with its talons on its head and turns towards Tokus. Oh my goodness. Tokus, it's now your turn. Well, there's... A cockatrice on my donkey <laughs> donkey's <laughs> head. Super unfortunate. Um, <laughs> Can't say I woke up this morning thinking I'd say that sentence. But, uh, <laughs> but here we are. All right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm worried. All right. I would like to lightning lure the cockatrice off of Petunia. Like grab its legs or something. Try to pull it off. I feel like if I stab at it, that's not going to do what I want it to do. Lightning lure technically just pulls it straight towards you, but I guess I'll allow that. 
That's a strength save. Okay. Strength check. I rolled a negative one. Ooh. So. Wow. Well, that's a one. All right. Off to a good start. Petunia's mane spikes up like a bristle brush. <laughs> As the whip wraps around it, you send your electricity flowing through and... Cockatrice's feathers singe a little bit as you pull it down off of Petunia and it flutters awkwardly to the ground next to you. All right, Petunia, I know you're not no draft horse, but we need to motor. So I (laughs) would like to move Petunia's full move and bolt after Shaba as far as she can go. Uh, The cockatrice is going to attempt to peck Petunia as you escape. Uh, (laughs) What is it, AC? 13. That is not good enough. Oh, no. Petunia. Petunia? You just, I just, you just became friends. Oh, uh, no. Uh-huh. Do you want to roll the saving throw, or do you want me to roll it? Constitution roll save. Roll it, Tokus. I'll roll it. Roll I'll, I'll it. feel less roll guilty it. if it turns to stone. She's got a con of 12. We have plus one. That, my friends, is an 11. Alright. So Petunia takes four points of damage, but continues running off through the woods and seems to be not stone at the moment. Oh, okay. Oh, thank goodness. That's always good when your mount is not stone. <laughs> <laughs> thank good. At the moment. That's a plus. Aslo. Aslo wishes that he had more uh, combat based spells in his repertoire. And <laughs> then he, uh, yeah, decides to take off at a sprint and double move. He and Ralph, I should say. Okay, how far is that? Ralph's speed is 40. 40 feet. Okay, so you all have a speed of 40. Yeah, all of us do. I say, Ralph, ride like the wind! <laughs> Shaba, you can do anything? Is it disadvantage to uh, make a ranged attack from horseback? I don't think so. No? Well, then I'll take a shot at the cockatrice as uh, I'll let Tilly do her thing. Actually, it's going to be disadvantage because you're firing into the darkness anyway. Oh, okay. All right, I'll try to take a parting shot as we run away at disadvantage. Uh, yeah, 12. 12 hits. Oh, all right. Nice. I should have marked it. Oh, well. (laughs) Uh, Nine damage. Your arrow strikes it in the side, and it gives off another one of its weird squawks. (laughs) Very good. Kind of just like that. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. Where did you find that online cockatrice sound? <laughs> yeah, it was on YouTube. I pulled, just pulled it up. Yeah, totally. It, it was actually captured by a real cockatrice in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds authentic. It's like that Bigfoot sound I heard last week. No, oh, yeah. I've mm-hmm. listened to those tapes. The Bigfoot tapes, I think they call them. It flies after you and... As Petunia is actually still the closest target, since it's the only one that didn't double move, it manages to catch up to the donkey and took this riding it, and it attempts to bite. Can I use? Can I impose disadvantage with my shield? You can. For my mount, she's a friendly character, is she not? So you can do disadvantage. Petunia, wait! <laughs> <laughs> Don't die, please. We just we just met each other. You get your beak off my Petunia, <laughs> or so help me. And with the disadvantage, Cockatrice misses as you hang your shield down behind you. And the beak just Ooh. pecks at the shield the last second. No, my shield! <laughs> Your shield turns to stone! <laughs> it turns to stone. Yeah. No. But, but it's like shield petunia, you know? Yeah, right. Can always get a new shield, can't get a new petunia. That's, yeah. Well, I could get a new donkey, but it wouldn't be But it be wouldn't petunia. be named petunia, <laughs> yeah. unless you named it that. Can probably get a donkey for cheaper than you can get a good shield, though, so, yeah. I mean. I mean, it's a bit of a toss-up. I think. Oh, maybe it's about time Tokus got a new shield. It can't turn non-living things to stone anyway. Uh, I was going to say stone shield sounds kind of cool, though. <laughs> Tokus? It's like a lot clunkier. Sounds right? real heavy. Uh, let's hightail it. Okay, you're going to double move? Come on, Petunia. <laughs> let's go, girl. Petunia? <laughs> just, oh! Come on, Petunia. Just hobbling around. I'm going to take another attack as you're running away. You can give this one disadvantage, oh, no. too, if you want. <laughs> yes, I'd like to. Oh, is that even a question? <laughs> well, you could save your reaction for later, or you can spend it now. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to use it now. I'll protect you, Petunia. You block the second attack, and... <sighs> it's like I'm riding with one hand and the shield's in the other. Uh, with that, you can tell it's not going to be able to catch up to you and make any more effective attacks. So, uh-huh. unless you want to shoot at it as you're going away or anything, we can end it here with you riding off into the night. 
leaving the cockatrice behind. Uh, that's okay. I'll save some fire vials for another day. <laughs> yes. And they yes. start forest fires potentially, so we don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness. This stance is so good, I can use it on my mount? Yeah, dude. That's legit. What? I mean, granted, it is using up my reaction, but... Yeah, it's because your mount is your friend. And you can use it on friends. Makes sense. Well, then I can't use it on Stripey. Exactly. He's the only <laughs> member of the party you can't use it on. <laughs> Suppose that as a rule. Be like, Sean, you could have saved Stripey there. Nope. No. No, actually, technically, by the rules, I could not have. <laughs> not a friend. <laughs> nope. Not a legal move. <laughs> oh, man. Well... We survived the cockatrice. And with that, we forge ahead. To the hallowed halls of Ildrazar. And the three heroes gallop off on their various different mounts towards... You say it again, Brian, that was really good. <laughs> oh, okay. Ildrazar. <laughs> All right. You gallop off through the woods as fast as your little mounts can carry you. Another hour or so later, looking down into a low valley ahead of you, you can see the remains of ancient stonework. Fallen pillars collapsed onto the ground, overgrown with ivy and vines. At the center of it all, a great pit leading straight down into the earth. <laughs> Whoa! Yes. Yes.